I've got something to say, and some people aren't going to like it. But I've been putting up with this for decades now, and I'm just tired of it. It is disrespectful. It is inconsiderate. It is demoralizing. And in my opinion, it's stupid. You don't agree with me? Tough. Deal with it. I've been dealing with you people who do this to me for most of my life. And you have no respect for my decision to believe what I believe. So this is a controversial topic. It is religion. Specifically, it is the responsibility of Christians to proselytize, which is a fancy word that means convert people to Christianity. Now, I am not attacking Christians. I am not attacking the Christian religion. I am just making clear how I feel about the decades after which I declared I was no longer a Christian, the decades that I have endured where friends and family members have taken it upon themselves to worry about my soul going to hell, which I do not believe in, and have tried over and over and over and over again to convert me back to Christianity. First of all, it's not going to ever happen. I will die before I will convert back to Christianity. Okay? Second of all, I have made it very clear to some of you that I do not appreciate and I do not want you to proselytize me. And some of you have chosen not to speak to me anymore. And some of you don't get the message. Don't proselytize me. Because every time you do, you just demonstrate a lack of respect for my beliefs. And you treat me like I'm some kind of idiot. I have my opinion on what you think about it, but that is my private opinion, and it's not relevant, so I'm not going to mention what it is. My opinion on you doing this to me, telling me, in some cases, many times, that you should believe in Jesus, Glenn. Only Jesus can save you. If you believe in God and Jesus, you're going to go to heaven. Otherwise, you're going to hell. I don't want you to go to hell, Glenn. Please, don't. Just come on, Glenn. Come to Jesus. Jesus saves. You have no idea how irritating that is. I don't walk around shoving my beliefs down everybody else's throat. And yet, you think you have the right, after I have explicitly stated I am not interested in your religion, and I do not want you to try to convert me. You think you have the right to continue to push. You do not have that right. It is not a right. It may be your responsibility as a good Christian, but that does not make it your right you are imposing your will, your beliefs, on me. And I do not agree with it. I do not condone it. And if you continue, then I will sever our relationship because I'm fed up after decades of having to tell you over and over again to stop, and you don't stop. You know, I was talking to a young lady, coincidentally Catholic, at work. I've always been nice to her and her sister, and one day we were working together. We didn't often work together. And I found out from talking to her that her sister had been fired because she just wasn't being responsible and wasn't coming into work and, and yeah, wasn't doing what she needed to do to maintain her employment with Amazon. And from talking to her from what she described, what her sister had done was her own fault. And I was sad because I liked her sister, and I liked her. And so we started to talk, and at some point, I, I don't really remember how the topic came up, but at some point, we, the topic came around to religion. I think she brought it up, and she was surprised when I said, I believe in God. She said, 
oh, I thought you were one of those smart people who doesn't believe in God. I said, why did you think that? She said, well, it just you just seem like that kind of person. It's like, I had no idea what that's supposed to mean. What kind of person fits that category? I, I, I don't get it. I mean, does that mean that she's a stupid person because she believes in God? Or because she believes in Jesus? I don't know. I mean, it was just very strange and not a, obviously a poorly considered statement that was kind of offensive. But I chose to turn the cheek. And so we talked. And then she started in on the typical proselytizing tactics that are often engaged in by Christians and sadly by people in cults. Now, I'm not saying Christianity is or is not a cult. I am simply saying that the same tactics that some proselytizers engage in are the same tactics used in cults. And some of the ones that, they, that are used is pretending to have interest in your religious beliefs before they try to separate you from those beliefs, make you feel like you're in danger of going to hell so they can scoop you up and save you. Woohoo! I knew what she was doing, but I hoped that she wasn't. So I gave her an out. She asked me a very serious question. I don't remember what it was. It isn't even important. It was about religion. And... I said, look, here's what we're going to do. It's break time. So you think about it. And if you still want to know the answer after break, I will tell you. But if you decide you really don't want to know, then I will forget that you asked me and you, you, can just, you and I can just pretend that question never came up. Because it was a question that was fraught with bad possibilities. So I didn't see her for a while after break was done. Finally, she came, comes back and she says she finally brings up that topic again. And I was a little bit surprised because I had kind of naively, I guess, hoped that she would have the common sense to let it go. But she didn't because she had to proselytize. So I just was patient. I've always been nice to her. Never had any reason not to be nice to her. And so this young lady plays this same tactic over and over again, asking me, what do I think about this? And then trying to save me and asking me, what do you think about that? And then trying to save me and asking me what I think about the other thing and trying to save me over and over again. She asks, she brings, my, my, my wife comes up. Now, for those of you who don't know me, my wife is deceased. She died of cancer and hypoglycemia years ago. And... She was asking me something, and I answered her honestly like I had every other question she had asked. And she said, deception. She didn't look at me when she said that. But I knew what she meant. Still, I wanted to make sure. So I asked her, what do you mean by that? She said, you're not being honest. I was angry. I am a very honest person. And for somebody who has asked me to answer a question about my wife who is deceased, about my religion, and then accused me of being dishonest is extremely offensive. I could have gone to HR and filed a, a harassment claim against her, but I didn't because she's young and she's stupid. And I mean that in the best possible way because young people are generally stupid, myself included when I was young, and sometimes I'm still stupid. She didn't quite get the message, though, she persisted a little bit longer. And I turned away from her, and I deliberately ignored her and talked to somebody else, and she finally got the message. And she has not spoken to me since then. Now, I have been continued to be kind to her. I have continued to greet her when I see her. But she does not... There was one time I was talking to a uh, team leader... And she came over and she stood there for several minutes waiting while we both ignored her. And finally she left. I don't know if she wanted to talk to the team leader or she wanted to talk to me. If it was to the team leader, probably should have interrupted. But if it was to me, good thing she didn't interrupt. But I've never been mean to her. But it was extremely offensive and disingenuous 
to, to suggest, to, to ask questions that suggest or imply that she has a genuine interest in my religious beliefs, which is there is no such thing as religion other than what's popped into humans' heads. God and religion are two separate things. That's what I believe. I believe in God. I do not believe in man-made things like religion. But that's beside the point. Coincidentally, around the same time, I was having interesting conversations with another person, very, very super, super nice lady, ed educated, um, has kids, has a wonderful boyfriend or a fiance, I forget, um, and just hard worker. You know, I just love working with her because I have no complaints about her. And so we were talking about religion, and she was sharing some stuff, and I was sharing some stuff. And then I opened the door. It was my mistake this time. I said, so thinking about what we talked about the other day, what are your thoughts? Stupid question. I didn't ask the question correctly. I wanted to know what her thoughts were on the things that I had shared about my experiences and my opinion. And she commenced to proselytize. And that was my fault. I mean, she didn't have to. She knew what I believed, and she could have left it alone. But she didn't feel that she should, which is her fault. But, you know, I, as quickly as possible, I left that, left that subject alone. I don't talk to her about religion anymore. I don't get to work with her very often. But every time I see her, I say hi, I wave and smile, and she's doing the same to me. Sometimes she sees me first and she waves and smiles. And no, she's not trying to hit on me or anything like that. She's just a very genuinely nice person. And very happy with the man she's got. And I'm celibate and chaste. And I'm not her religion. And I'm certainly not going to switch from believing in one God to believing in that. <sighs> So that wasn't as bad as told I'm a liar when I had only been honest. The worst situation was of in, in recent times, this year specifically, a family member who I have repeatedly told them, and I'm not, I, I don't want to be more specific why I switched from a family member to them, but you can figure it out in your head. I said, please stop proselytizing me. I do not appreciate it. I am not interested. Please don't do it anymore. Multiple times over the years, I have told them to stop. Multiple times, they have done it again anyways. Now, sometimes, granted, it was just, would you like to go to church with us? And I would politely say, no, thank you. And they would ask my kids. And, you know, that was, that was okay. There were some other things that were kind of crossing the line, but I loved them very much, and I let it slide. But then recently, my son and I spent some time with them, and my daughter was also there. They had arranged so that we would all be able to come together, my daughter from her university, my, kid, my son and I from home, and during that stay, there were some situations in which one of them said and did some things that weren't like out and out proselytization, but they were suggestive of a religious significance. For example, hold my hand. Let's talk about this. That is not something that that person normally does with me. In fact, that person doesn't really talk to me that much. And I have always given the benefit of the doubt and assumed that that person is just busy because they, the, the type of work they do keeps them quite busy. Um, so... During that visit, that person made some 
very offensive statements, calling me and my kids disrespectful and some other things. And I said, you know, I, I apologized. And I said that what we had done was, you're right, it was wrong. We, you know, we, we should have done better. And this person went on and on and on, and obviously very upset and, and said, you know, every time you come here, this is what happens. And okay, I, I own it. Because if I make a mistake, I own it. But that wasn't enough for this person. They just continued to harangue me. And sorry is not enough. You have disrespected us. It's like, no, I wasn't trying to disrespect you. It was a mistake. Those were mistakes, but there was no disrespect intended. Well, this is my house. And you know what, what's going on right now. I'm not going to explain it because it's not relevant. It's not bad. It's just not relevant. And yet, you have not done these things that we've asked of you. And I said, you're right. But there was no disrespect intended. It was stupidness, not disrespect. Oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah. This person was raising their voice to me. And I tried to explain, but they would have none of it. So then I went to the other one, and I tried to explain. I said, look, there was, I can't speak for my kids because they're separate individuals for me. They're teens. But for myself, there was never any intent of being disrespectful. But you didn't do this thing. Yes, I did in front of you and our guest or your guest. I did that right in front of you. But your kids did. Yeah, true. My kids didn't. And this person also asserted that I, was, I had been disrespectful. I said, I have not had any intention of being disrespectful because I love you very much, and it was a mistake. I'm wrong. I admit it. I own it, and I'm sorry for it. And I'm sorry it upsets you guys. But you guys telling me that I'm being disrespectful is this, and I told, I told them this, I told both of them, I said, this is the same, you know, you're talking about me being disrespectful, and I'm telling you I was not. And yet, all these years, despite having multiple times told you over the years not to proselytize me, you have done it again. Well, we had our, we had our family over, and you pulled your, your, your son out, and then you pulled your daughter out. I said, yes, because they had both indicated to me that they were not comfortable with being proselytized. And they were both too kind and care about you too much to actually say something that would have offended you and, and the other members of the family. So I took one out and I asked, are you okay being here and there in that situation where you're being proselytized? And my son said no. So then I waited a while and we sat in the room together and then I pulled my daughter out. And I asked her, and she said the same thing. She was not comfortable with it. Her religious beliefs are not the same as mine, but she was not comfortable with being proselytized either. And they took offense at this because we had separated ourselves from everybody that had, a t had come together for this evening, uh, some family and some friends, and they were all talking about their religious beliefs. So it was very uncomfortable for us. And rather than making a scene or making it difficult for everybody, we just moved ourselves away from the conversation to a different room, a different part of the house. And we stayed there. And when they were leaving, we said goodbye to all the guests. This was very hurtful that... They accused us of being disrespectful. Was it careless on our part to not do the things that they expected of us? Yes. The only defense I have is we have developed habits in our own home that are different from the habits in their home. And habits, unfortunately, are very powerful. It's not easy to override them. And maybe they don't get this, 
And I, I totally respect that. But if you want somebody to do something and they have a different habit from your household, if you don't remind them again and again, they're going to fail. It's very hard not to. But what really upset me, aside from the proselytization and the accusations of disrespectfulness, was the statements made by one of them that I was a bad father, that I was a bad parent. That really hurt too because I love them very, very much. They've always, they've always you know, been very kind to us. And the next day, that one came to me and said, I'm sorry for raising my voice to you. I'm not sorry for what I said to you, but I'm sorry about how I delivered the message. Which is like, you know what, I'm sorry, but bam! Total disrespect. So they doubled down on the insults, on the proselytization, and totally refused to accept it. I mean, and the last part of the whole conversation that night before I went to bed was that person coming into the room and said, you're wasting your time, honey. Somebody who is blind, is, has rejected God is not going to listen. And I said, you're right. You, you got it. I agree with you. But I haven't rejected God. I've rejected their religious beliefs. So, do not come onto my channel and proselytize me or anybody else on my channel. I don't care if it's a collectician or Glenn's Fast Reviews or the PC Expert Amateur. I respect that you have your religious beliefs. I respect that your religious beliefs are different than mine. I respect that you are expected to proselytize, but you are not allowed to do so on my channels. If you do, I will take appropriate actions to address your harassment of myself and other view and the viewers on my channel. So if you are one of my viewers or one of my subscribers and you want to proselytize, not on my channels, okay? Please do not cross that line with me because I do not want to impose my beliefs on anybody else when it comes to religion. That's your choice. Do not impose your beliefs on me. I don't believe in heaven and hell. I believe in God. I do not believe in religions. They are man-made. That is my opinion. Don't like it? Not my problem. That's your problem. If you cannot distinguish between God and religion, and you think they are synonymous, then you have missed the boat. So, I'm sorry if I have offended anybody, but frankly, I have been so tired of this. You know, occasionally I get these proselytization messages on my channels. Don't do it anymore. And I realize that some of you will not see this message. So I will give you one warning to stop proselytizing on my channels. If you do it again, I will report you and I will ban you from my channels. All of them. Doesn't care. Doesn't matter to me if you are my number one supporter. Your money, your support, your viewership is not worth it to me to put up with proselytization. I don't care if you're a Muslim. I don't care if you're a Hindu. I don't care if you're a Buddhist. I don't care if you're a Scientologist. I don't care what you are. No proselytization, period, ever on my channel. That is final. Don't be rude. Be civil. Be respectful. Don't make things personal. Act maturely. And we can have a great conversation even if we agree to disagree. But you step over any of the lines, any of the rules of my community, my channels, and I, yeah, that's just, bye. One warning, you do it again, bye. I'm not going to put up with it. I hope I have made myself abundantly clear 
on this entire matter. If there are any questions, polite questions are allowed. No proselytization, no rudeness, no insults, and I will respond. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.